So let's not delay. Let, let's talk the first one. The marquee matchup, I think, of this weekend, depending on uh, how you look at it. We have Navy versus Notre Dame. Notre Dame, a 20-and-a-half point favorite at the time of recording here, uh, with an over-under of 50 and a half. They're playing this game in Dublin, Ireland, 2.30 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock. The last time they played this game in Ireland was 2012, the Notre Dame championship year. It's supposed to be played there again in 2020, but COVID stopped that, so they're playing it this year. Now, do know, in the forecast, it's early, so this might change, so keep an eye on it. I don't know if this is going to change a whole lot, though. It's expected to rain Saturday. I don't think wind's really going to be an issue. I don't know if it's going to be downpours, uh, but definitely keep an eye on that weather report uh, as we get closer to Saturday. Right off the bat, I bet over 15.5 total points for this. Uh, Numbers say that I should hit on Notre Dame here. I've already missed the best number, but my numbers still say Notre Dame minus 27.5. I haven't hit that for some reason yet. I'm a little tepid, I guess, to do so, um, and I'll get into that here in a moment. The reason I bet the over, though, I think this is a prime over candidate game because neither team can really rep out what the other one does in practice. They just, uh, you know, Navy doesn't have a Sam Hartman type arm, and of course Notre Dame can't match that wing team. I know they've had all offseason two, and they play Navy every single year, but you saw it last year that Navy had a lot of matchup issues. Now, if you're looking at last year, the midshipmen were able to run for 255 yards on the ground, and then Notre Dame on the other end threw for 269 yards with Drew Pine, who I maintain is not that great a quarterback. Uh, Dana Fofana, the, the tailback, the straight back for Navy, had 133 yards, 8.9 a carry, even though his offensive line was seriously, seriously outmatched by Notre Dame's defensive line. It's just because that certain type of offense that they run. But there is a new-ish system coming in here. Kennesaw State offensive coordinator Grant Chestnut, pardon me, is introducing a more modern spread option. So we can expect less under center wing team or shotgun, similar concepts, maybe a little bit more passing. But we need to talk about some injuries here for Navy. They are in trouble at the quarterback position. Ty Lavatai, he suffered a season-ending injury last year. He's working his way back in this year. But he's not the certified starter. Well, the, the headlines say he's fighting for a spot back. You look at uh, Tedros Gleaton. He's the projected starter, but he's academically ineligible. He's actually not even listed on the two deep as of last Friday. So we're getting some sort of combination of Blake Horvath and uh, Lavatai. They're listed or on that depth chart. Uh, Horvath has no game action yet. He had 57 career touchdowns in high school, by the way, 49 of which came on the ground. So he is a rushing focused quarterback. That's no surprise at Navy. In uh, one more injury note, uh, receiver Nathan Kent is also out with a knee injury. So, a lot of information there, a lot going on. Kelly, what do your numbers say about this game? Yeah, Brett, the first game of the 2023 FBS college football season. Let's go, dude. You said it's the marquee game. My numbers would agree. Um, I do this game rating, so scale of 0 to 100, how excited should we be about a game? The Week 0 slate, as you can imagine, not registering uh, super high on that rating, but this Notre Dame-Navy game does come out on top of all the games that we are looking at here in Week 0. I have Notre Dame in this one by 22, so slightly more than Vegas, but not quite as much as you. Uh, Notre Dame power rated number 12 nationally for me coming into this preseason with my updated finalized numbers, a top 15 defense and a top 30 offense. Navy is power rated number 94 with a number 75 defensive unit and the number 115 offensive unit. So I have this as a really big mismatch when Navy is on the field against that Notre Dame defense. To the point, Brett, that I wouldn't be surprised if the Irish defense registered a score, whether that be a safety or a defensive touchdown off of a off of a fumble return or, or a pick six. I think this defense is really going to wreak some havoc uh, this week in Ireland for Notre Dame. So 94% win expectancy. I really don't see any issues here for Notre Dame. The Irish should roll in this game. Yeah, something interesting, though, about this Navy roster is that they returned 17 starters. That's pretty unheard of when you talk about returning production. For service academies, they usually rotate upperclassmen uh, real hard. But this was a really inexperienced team in 21. A lot of it returned in 22, and now most of it's returning again here in 2023. Uh, I do want to talk about a little bit of trends. I'm not a huge trends buyer. They are, they're typically meaningless, and you know when used out of context, pretty rough. But Navy has been really bad in these season openers. They're 0-3 outright in their last three with losses to Marshall, BYU, and, oh yeah, last year's Delaware team. That took, I think, most of us by surprise. They're also 1-4 and against the spread in their last five openers. I don't know if it's a coming out flat thing. I don't know if it's a coming out with challenging opponents thing. They're certainly challenging themselves this year with Notre Dame. 
Uh, if you look back last year, Notre Dame scored all 35 points in the first half. They led for 35-13 before uh, scoring zero in the second half and letting Navy back into that to a point where, boy, I actually thought Navy might have won that game if you watched it. So, I bet Notre Dame minus 10.5 in the first half. You can still get that number at FanDuel Sportsbook as a time of recording here on Monday night. I think Notre Dame's able to get off to a fast start. They surely can throw the football on Navy. Um, and I think even with this new ish system that they're watching the the new option that they're going to be seeing across the way like you said I don't think Navy's going to or uh, Notre Dame pardon me is really going to have that much of an issue if you do want to look at Navy though and you're a little bit more bullish on them than perhaps we are I would champion maybe betting over 14 and a half team points I'm not on that myself but I also don't hate it again Notre Dame cannot replicate what they're seeing on the field in practice so it's going to be all new to them and there's an opportunity for Navy to be able to score there Although those injuries at quarterback do keep that in mind before you pull the trigger. And just one last note that I have on this. Navy def- Navy's defensive line ranked number one in the conference this year per Phil, Phil Steele and Athlon Sports. But their defensive secondary is expected to be pretty bad. Not a whole lot of talent back there. So if you look at Sam Hartman's maybe passing yards when that drops later on in the week, I don't mind playing over that at all. I think he's going to come out there even with the new system, not Dave Clawson's slow mesh. He's coming out here being able to throw the ball on them. Navy finished 131st in pass EPA last year. Uh, That was last. So we now have 133 teams, but last year that was dead last. So keep in mind that Notre Dame be able to come out in this game early, be able to throw the ball around the yard a little bit, and that's why I'm looking at that 10.5 first half for Notre Dame. Any thoughts on that? Any objections? No, nah, Brett. I mean, that's the difference, right, between what you're doing in the in the the sports wagering gambling space and what I'm doing with just the numbers based and trying to analyze the teams from that regard. You're talking about first half over under. You're talking about team totals, all these different things. My numbers are out there. They're they're on the website k4ratings.com. People can take a look at them. You can do with that information what you will. But as we talked about, um, all those all those things you're diving into there, I, I stay away from given the day job. But uh, yeah. It, I didn't hear anything that you said that I was like, no, nah, that's not right, or I don't think so. So a lot of good information there. Uh, folks will take it for what it's for. Uh, at the end of the day, for me, it's a 94% win expectancy for Notre Dame, and I expect they're going to get the job done. <laughs>